The organisers of yesterday's protest next to the civic offices are not phased by the small attendance. Instead, they're buoyed by the quality of attendees and the drive to bring the community, people and process to the forefront of the issues that prevail in the city. Joe Kane joined the throng. Despite the first protest three months ago attracting over 4,000 people on a single issue, Sunday's rally covered a wide range of topics that did not disappoint. For the few hundred that turned up on Sunday, it was clear that the diverse group was just as frustrated, just as disillusioned with the direction in Christchurch as they were three months ago. The organisers, however, are not disappointed with the turnout. And there was a high calibre of people here today from all walks of life and all ages. And as long as that's happening, I'm happy. Were you disappointed that there were no members of the council? There were a few spattering of community board, but no yeah. councillors turned oh, up. Extremely disappointed. In fact, I mentioned it in my early speech. Where was the B team that supported us so much in February? Nowhere to be seen now. I think that's mainly due to Kerry Marshall, the Crown Observer. He's definitely silenced the team. Reassess this whole situation, and we're actually very, very happy with the way it went today. The, the crowd was certainly down a bit to what we would have liked. But I think it would be fair to say that the range of speakers and the quality of the speeches was exceptional. And it's given people a lot of food for thought, but there's certainly a momentum out there to sort of see change get underway. We're very much on the same page, most people are on the same page who are considering these issues, that what needs to happen, it's more about process and timing where these things are going to be worked out. There was some disquiet about the lack of turnout from our elected representatives. However, the crowd soon showed its displeasure when the acting mayor, Nari Button, was spotted from the top floor. Cantabrians Unite Peter Lynch certainly warmed the crowd up with his synopsis that covered the reinsurance issues, the gagged councillors and a hundred day plan for people. And of course we did have some friends in there for a while. We had the B team, Tim Carter, Yanni Johansson, Glenn Livingstone etc. But of course they have all been silenced by central government. They have been silenced and where are they today? Are any of those B team councillors here? No. We're facing the fact that we've got a central government and a city council that are worried about a hundred day plan for the central business district. A hundred day plan for a concrete jungle with there's thousands of you who should be dealt with first. We need a hundred day plan for the red zoners in Brooklyn, South Shore, everywhere, off the hills. Do you agree with me? And we need a plan for all the elderly, the poor old elderly folks who really need to be seen to now and helped into new homes. Instead of Sarah telling an elderly couple in their 75th year, go out and get a mortgage. People must come first. But there were a range of speakers who brought specific issues to the forefront, from Brooklyn's Red Zone to the Christchurch Rates Relief Group. And I'm here to be selfish for Brooklyn's. I love Brooklyn's. And I agree with what Nick was saying and the other speakers before us. We need to get the control back into the communities. We need a leader and we need leaders in our council, not people that cow down to government policy. The mark of a great city, a great country, is how it looks after its disadvantaged. This council imposes extra burden on these people so that it can spend plenty of money on convention centres and the like, while many people live in third world conditions in today's New Zealand. One protester says, despite the less than expected turnout, there are thousands of people who agree with yesterday's protest.